Hey, good morning, everyone. Here are some upcoming announcements and events. The scripture of the week is Philippians chapter four. Be sure to talk about it with family and friends. Special thanks to everyone who's been able to attend our drive up services. Another big special thanks to all of those who prepared the church grounds, those who served during the service, and our tech team for providing the sound for the services and putting the messages on YouTube and Facebook. The services have been a huge blessing. Some of our members were able to interact with those passing by. Let's continue to see how God will use us. The next strategic prayer meeting will be Friday, July 17th at 7 p.m. Be sure to check your TPC newsletter for call and information. During this time, there are several ways for you to continue to worship the Lord with your giving. You can download the Givelify app and locate Turning Point Church, or you can visit tpcglobal.org forward slash giving. If you have not been getting the TPC newsletters or have not been contacted by a member of our pastoral care team, please give the church office a call. We'd love to hear from you. And although we aren't physically meeting, we are still virtually meeting, so be sure to connect with us at tpcglobal.org. Amen. Let's give the Lord uh, uh, some praise this morning. Hallelujah. It is indeed a great day in the Lord. And it gives me great pleasure and humble to be able to step up, if you will, to take us where we need to go and follow what God is saying. Amen? All right. Well, in continuing with um, the message theme from last week, last week was temperature check, because we alluded the temperature check as to what they're doing with the COVID-19. They shoot that little thing at your forehead to see if you are healthy enough to enter in to an assembly or whatever that case may be. Well, we did temperature check on sin because we wanna make sure that as we coming out of this time and as God is opening up doors that we are healthy, if you will. We go back to some of those basic things that the Lord has placed in our spirit that because of fear and other en entities that COVID has caused, we started to kind of retract. So we want to make sure that we get back on track. Amen? So this week's temperature check is on faith. Now you know faith is a wide subject. Not going to get into all that today, but just specifically uh, two scriptures. Turn with me in your Bibles. Just two quick ones. Romans, well first, Habakkuk 2.4, then Romans 1.17. Habakkuk 2.4, and Romans, on our favorite books, 1.17. And I guess I better put my eyes on so I could see what I ain't looking at. You got it, say amen. First reading I'm going to read is from Habakkuk 2, verse 4. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Turn over to Romans 1.17. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. God bless the reading. And there will be a few more scriptures that I'll be adding on as we go to kind of bring this short message together. Wonderful Holy Spirit, we give you praise this morning. 
We thank you for stirring us. We thank you for giving us, Lord, recognition of our faculties. And Lord, to be able to be here for such a time as this. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that the anointing and this word that comes right from the throne, Lord God, is here for our purpose to edify us, to build us, build us up, and for us to alter, if needed, our course in this thing called life. So Lord, I ask that your servant decrease now so that you could increase as this message go forth and it is blessed and sanctified in Jesus' name. And the people of God say amen. amen. So, pull this back a little bit. It's getting hot out here. So temperature check faith. Well, the Bible teaches that faith is the key to everything for a Christian. Amen? Why faith? Because <laughs> by, without faith you can't get saved. We come to Christ through faith. Amen? By faith we live our Christian lives with joy and gladness. And you can't please God without faith. Now, it never ceases to amaze me just how gullible people are. And I'm going to camp on the word for a quick minute. Better remember P.T. Barnum from the Barnum and Bailey circus fame? He said there's a sucker born every minute. And you know he was right. It seems that there's no limit to what we will believe. And I want to draw some distinctions here this morning. Now listen to some of the titles that appeared in the tabloids found in your grocery store checkout lines. Cow mattresses help cows produce more milk. Mom and diet of only chicken lays huge egg. World War II bomber found on the moon. Women gives birth to two-year-old baby. Child walks and talks in three days. Adam and Eve's bones found in Asia. Eve was a space alien. Now, as ridiculous and ludicrous as those titles may sound, if you check the sales of the Examiner, the Inquirer, and the Star, you will see millions of people buy these periodicals and read that nonsense that I just talked about. And, and here's the scary thing. Some of them actually believe it. Some of them actually believe it. Well, it is nonsense, but you know what they also try to do? They try to ascribe that same type of gullibility to us as Christians. Some people who consider themselves to be logical or rational believe that Christians are gullible for our faith in God. Well, I got this to say to them. They don't know the God that we know. See, we believe in miracles and an unseen God. And to them, that's just ludicrous. Or even gullible, as some may say, about believing in the Lord. But the Bible teaches that faith is the key to everything for the Christian. By faith we come to Christ, by faith we live our lives, and without faith it is impossible to please God. I say that because it bears repeating. Faith is the core of our Christian living, folks. I want that to really hit home. See, our faith is the key to unlock the door to certainty and eternity. So let's begin with faith and see just what the scripture has to say as it relates to our salvation, how we live our lives. The Apostle Paul made the point that God works in a powerful way with the Word of God. Many passages that he point out, points out that everyone who believes in the message of the gospel is saved from their sins. Isn't that right? That shows us that Jesus is the center point of our faith. 
When Paul writes that in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, how many of us know that we are the righteousness of God? See, and in speaking of the righteousness of God, he's talking about the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. After all, we do serve a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen? So and the gospel centers in the person of Christ because of his sinless life, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension, which gives us the hope that we are walking today. Now, God's righteousness is revealed to us in two very obvious ways. Christ is righteousness. There's none other. And Christ imparts his righteousness to us and we have been cleansed from our sins. So that's the function and purpose of preaching the gospel. This is why Paul emphasized Christ and him crucified in his preaching of the gospel. This is why we celebrate the Lord's table together to remember the righteous one who was crucified in our place. Can I get an amen? This truth is the basis for our salvation. The gospel is an explanation of, of why we can be saved. See, we can only be saved because of what God has done. The Bible teaches that we are all sinners for two reasons. Number one, by nature. We were born into sin. Number two, by choice. We ignore, deny, or reject God's plan of salvation. The fact is, we are totally unable to save ourselves. Hallelujah. The good news is this, though. Salvation has been made possible for us through Jesus Christ. We must first understand the message of the gospel so we'll know how we can be saved. Folks, I'm here to tell you, it's more of that type of message needs to go out. There's too many people walking around not sure how they're going to get from one day to the next because they don't have the gospel in them. They don't know that Christ came, died, rose for their sins, and they use every other avenue possible except for believing in the triune God. Amen? You know, I like how the NIV put Romans 1.17. They say a righteousness, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written. And the righteous will live by faith. See, the way that the righteousness of God is given to us is only through faith. That is why it's called good news. If all we understand that Christ is righteous and we are not, that is good news. The bad news is when we don't have faith in this truth. But what is true biblical faith? See, after we receive his righteousness, is faith something that we do? Upon on that for a minute. Actually, the contrary is this. True biblical faith is never a work we perform because we are somehow good and worthy, as some folks tend to um, articulate. How many times we have run into people that say, I'm a good person, I've done this, I've given this, I'm going to heaven but have not received Jesus. How many of us have the boldness to tell them that no, you have to confess to the Lord Jesus Christ in order to have the same level of confidence that I have, that I know what I know where I'm going if I check out from the world today. True biblical faith means rejecting all of our works and trusting completely in Christ for everything. So you say, Pastor, how am I going to remember all of this? There's an easy way to explain this. Forsaking all things and trusting in him. See, true biblical faith is casting oneself fully on the Lord Jesus Christ as our only hope for salvation. Faith is trusting in what Jesus did on the cross. It is all we need. Faith is as resting one's whole weight on God. When we believe in God the way the Bible tells us to, we are indeed resting our entire being on Him. It is by faith that we have the righteousness of Christ imputed or imparted to us. 
but it is also by faith that we live our lives every day. We must, not, we must not only trust in Christ for our salvation, we must also trust Christ in our lives. You see, we try to do too much on our own, try to do too much things. Yes, we are saved, but we have an avenue with our faith in Christ, because he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be a good time to say amen. <laughs> In our text, Paul quotes from the Old Testament prophet, prophet Habakkuk when he says, The righteous or the just will live by faith. We also find these quotations in Galatians 3.11 and Hebrews 10.38. It is one of the greatest statements of all the scriptures in my opinion. Amen? The just shall live by faith, not act by faith not stare down or articulate by faith, but live by faith. That means all your being, everything you got, hallelujah, is living by faith. Recently, and for those that are avid TV watchers, there's been a lot of interest in um, the television shows and the survivor stories. People have become so fascinated with situations of survival, they forgot the basic tenet of survival. I would pray to God that we Christians would become as fascinated with spiritual survival as we do with those shows about survival. Because spiritual survival is the only way to navigate this course that we have called life. <laughs> See, if we get as fascinated about spiritual survival, the only thing we would need would be faith in Jesus, the Christ, and Him alone. Hallelujah. See, I'm going to give you an example here. The scriptures we read today was used by God to change the life of Martin Luther. Not Martin Luther King Jr., Martin Luther, who was the one of the sons of the Reformation. He used that to bring a spiritual revolution to Christianity. See, Martin Luther was a devout monk, and he was living in Rome, Italy. He, like a lot of Christians, had been trying to earn his salvation by doing good works for God. And any one of us can relate to that story that Martin Luther became very frustrated. And he wrote these words himself. But what works can come from a heart like mine? How can I stand before the holiness of my judge with works polluted in their very source? Those words may seem strange and ancient to us, but simply put, Martin Luther was having a hard time. He had a hard time being a Christian, and he was very discouraged with his relationship with God. So, what he did, Martin Luther began to study the book of Romans. He came across this passage of scripture. The righteous will live by faith. And God began to use it to speak to his heart. On another day, Martin Luther was in the church of St. John Lateran in Rome. There was a set of medieval stone stairs which supposedly were the stairs leading up to Pilate's house in Jerusalem. Apparently there was supposed to be the stairs upon which Jesus walked. And they call those stairs Scala Sancta or Holy Stairs. See, many pilgrims that come to Rome will ascend these steps on their knees, pausing to pray at various intervals. It's the kind of stuff he was dealing with, okay? Where there were stains that was apparently or uh, alleged was the bleeding wounds of Jesus. It was there that God brought these words of scripture to Luther's mind. That just shall live by faith. At that point, Luther saw clearly his superstition and he shuddered it. He realized that he could never save himself by works. But he could be saved by the righteousness of Christ received by faith. Hallelujah. He descended those stairs a new man. Of course... He became the man God used for the greatest reformation of the church has ever known. In fact, it is known historically as 
the great reformation of the 16th century. That is how powerful one word of scripture can be to alter the course of who we are as Christians. And I kind of got an amen. But get this, get this. Notice the scripture does not only say that the righteous will be saved by faith, it declares that the righteous will live by faith. Hallelujah. See, faith is not just something by which we enter into a right relationship with God. It is also what we live every single day. It is not that we come to Christ by faith and then we live by good works. We got to live by faith every single day. See, remember what the scripture said, it is from faith to faith. From faith from first to last. In other words, it is from faith to faith and so on. It becomes a way of life for us and is a principle of life for the believer. How many of us agree with that? Say amen. Hallelujah. The Bible calls all of us to trust in Christ. We are called to believe. And I don't have to ask this wonderful family if you believe. But for those that may be in the listening ear, do you believe? Do you truly trust Christ? Have you truly experienced in the spirit that Christ is your savior? Does your heart call out to him in childlike trust? See, if you do not know Jesus, cast yourself on him as your only hope of salvation. And if you have trusted Christ and you have been infilled by the power of the Holy Spirit, well, live from faith to faith. It is time for us to set aside our own strength for living, folks. Trust him daily. Jesus is all that you need. Hallelujah. The righteousness of Christ avails itself before God. The Bible tells us that those who are saved by faith become holy as are all things that belong to God. For example, for example, the Israelites were set apart by God to be his own holy people in Exodus 19, 5 to 6. In Titus 2, 14, Christ gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works see we have something that god's people did not have in exodus 19. we have the power and the person of the holy spirit to infill us lead us and direct us our faith in christ should naturally produce a godly result hallelujah Missionary David Brainerd talks about how this was proven in the mission field that God had sent him out to. He said this, I never got away from teaching of Jesus and him crucified. And when the people were gripped by this great evangelical doctrine of Christ and him crucified, I had no need to give them instructions about morality. Hallelujah. <laughs> As I close, and I close with this, I want us to really look at ourselves, look at ourselves, look at our lives, look at where God has brought us to thus far, look at how this COVID-19 altered the way we knew life, but look at how much he has still blessed us even though we walked through all of that, look at how much he has lifted us up where we need to be lifted up this is a time folks where we grow closer to our lord and savior this is a time where we meditate on his word this is a time as we draw close to him he draw close to us and we begin to speak his word we walk in the newness of life and we preach jesus to all who come within our midst after all we are salt we are light and we're supposed to live from faith to faith so when we begin to fully live by faith, 
as a way of life, forsaking all roads leading to unrighteousness, we will truly experience life and live it more abundantly as Jesus intends for us to do. Can I get an amen this morning? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Holy Father, ah, you are so good. We sang a song this morning and prayed, say that you are good. You are good. You will never let us down. You never leave us nor forsake us. You said in your word, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So we lift you up this morning, Lord God. Thank you for this refreshing word about how we're supposed to live. Lord, I know even I sometimes we go to work, drive the highways and byways, and try to do it in our own strength. We don't rely on you as the author and finisher of our faith. We have faith that the next person in oncoming traffic is not going to veer over and hit us head on. But we can't have faith in you. Lord, forgive us this day if we have not seen the pattern that you have allotted for us to walk from faith to faith. Grant us now that peace, O oh God, that we rely on you for all things as we walk in this newness of life and rely totally on you so that our lives could be what you have authored it to be. In Jesus' name. Now if anyone, whether you're here or in listening distance, and has not made Jesus your Lord, this is a perfect time to do so. If there's anyone, even if it's a guest riding in a car, that does not know Jesus, please acknowledge by raising up a hand and tooting the horn. Hallelujah, we're all family and we're all walking in the newness of life. Father, we thank you. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. May this preach word, Lord God, large, set, take root in the hearts of your people this day. And we just want to close this by saying, Hallelujah, Lord God. Amen. 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 Now we're getting ready to...